Iran has displayed new domestically manufactured air defense systems as part of the annual military parade held in Tehran to mark National Army Day on April 18. The low-altitude homegrown air defense systems dubbed Majid and Zulfikar, as well as the long-range air defense missile system Damavan and the Katam artillery fire control system, were put on a display during the parade. Zulfikar is equipped with a mechanized multi-launcher system and can connect to electro-optic systems. Majid consists of electro-optical fire control detectors able to detect and destroy cruise missiles and drones. Another feature of these systems, which use ARA's military vehicle as a launcher carrier, is the high mobility. The use of ARA's military vehicle makes both systems suitable for use in ground force armored units, which have been transformed into mobile attack units with structural changes. Damavan can intercept and destroy various types of aircraft, as well as cruise and ballistic missiles. The Katam artillery fire control system is capable of striking various aerial targets at low altitudes. As part of the military parade, the Iranian army also displayed dozens of unmanned aerial vehicles UAVs, used for reconnaissance and combat missions, tanks, anti-aircraft batteries, advanced missile systems, and different kinds of electronic warfare systems. The list of drones showcased during the parade included the Cayman 22 Long Range Multifunctional Strategic Drone, the Mohajer 6 Multifunctional Drone, Mohajer 4, the Modern Mohajer 2 Reconnaissance Drone, and many others. In his message addressed to Major General Abdulrahim Massavi, the Commander in Chief of Iran's army, Ali Khamenei, the supreme leader of the Islamic Revolution, called on the Iranian military to increase this preparedness as much as necessary. Meanwhile, Iranian President Hassan Rouhani stressed the importance of the relationship between the Iranian people and the Iranian army. The national security of Iran depends on the preservation of its territorial integrity, and this can be achieved only under the protection of Iran's national unity, and Iran's national unity can only be achieved through democracy, the official website of the president quoted Rouhani as saying. In his turn, Major General Massavi said that today, the drone capability of the Iran army is the power and winning card of the armed forces, which be used on the battlefield if needed. He further added that the most important point is that the army has achieved such drone power in the years of maximum pressure and sanctions. On August 22, after years of hype, Iran finally unveiled the Bever 373, a long-range air defense system whose claimed capabilities are supposedly on par or better than those of the Russian S-300 or the US Patriot. Whether or not the Bever can actually match the regime's claimed specs in the field, the announcement raises a number of pressing concerns about how the system might be used inside Iran and beyond. According to Iranian sources, Bever can detect up to 300 targets at a time at a range of 300 kilometers, simultaneously tracking 60 of them and engaging six, whether aircraft or ballistic missiles. The system uses two small truck-mounted phased array radars, a command and control truck, and up to six vertically positioned four tube launchers for each battery. A larger area surveillance radar with a claimed range of 450 kilometers may be incorporated as well and would probably be necessary for effective operation. This configuration is similar to Russian systems. In contrast, a Patriot battery does all of its detecting, tracking, and engaging using a single radar. Bever can also reportedly use the latest version of Iran's Sayyid missile, Sayyid 4, which would give it an engagement range of up to 200 kilometers. Iran unveiled another air defense system two months ago, the similar but shorter range 15th of Corded. Tehran claims this system can detect, track, and engage six conventional targets up to 100 kilometers away, and stealthy targets up to 45 kilometers away. 
There is no verifiable open source information on the actual performance of these two systems, but the June 20 attack on a US Navy RQ-4 Global Hawk reconnaissance drone over the Strait of Hormuz involved a similar system. A video released by Iran showed an Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps unit firing what looked like a single Sayyid II from a third of corded anti-aircraft system at night, followed shortly afterward by falling wreckage. The battery's young crew were credited with the confirmed kill, which drew no kinetic military response from the United States. They later received prizes from Iran's supreme leader. Widely ignored, however, was the role played by the national military's newly detached Islamic Republic of Iran Air Defense Force IRIADF, in detecting and tracking the target and passing the order to fire, contributions that likely magnified what the battery could do if it were ever deployed on its own or outside Iran's domestic air defense network. Added to this performance uncertainty is the fact that weapons designers and operators typically overstate how well their systems can perform and often present mere modifications of previous systems as new products. Iran has been particularly prone to both practices. The Baber announcement follows years of increased Iranian effort and investment on two related fronts, developing a range of mobile missile systems for the Islamic Republic's layered air defense network and seeking to forward deploy them to allied territories with the goal of undermining Western and Israeli air supremacy should wider conflict break out. According to Tehran, these new systems are light and flexible, can be set up for operation on short notice, can be used in innovative fashion, and need only limited support. In early 2018, for example, the Saudi-led coalition in Yemen discovered an Iranian Sayyid 2C missile round of the same type that shot down the American Global Hawk. It was apparently destined for the Houthi rebels, together with an Iranian-made passive electronic receiver that could silently produce targeting solutions for the missile using GPS and other air traffic control signals given off by military and commercial craft. If employed effectively, whether by the Houthis or operators from Iran or Hezbollah, the missile would have been capable of shooting down a high-value target such as a large AWACS surveillance plane or tanker aircraft, giving the Houthis a significant propaganda coup. Back at home, the Baber 373 could give Iran a means of producing and fielding effective long-range air defense batteries in large numbers, assuming the system can perform as advertised. In contrast, when Russia delivered the S-300 to Iran in 2016, it sent only four batteries and a limited number of missiles. Tehran is also well aware that an S-300-based network would always be at risk of compromise by other countries who either own the system themselves or are privy to its secrets after years of intelligence work on Soviet Russian weapons. A domestically developed system like Baver might not be as easily compromised. The longer-term strategic threats posed by such developments are considerable. Armed with a larger number of new missile batteries that are more mobile and concealable than the S-300, Iran could potentially place an anti-access area denial umbrella over all of the shipping lanes from the Persian Gulf down to the Gulf of Oman. Moreover, the technology used to develop such systems could help the regime develop new ballistic missiles with much more maneuverable and therefore survivable re-entry vehicles, making them more capable of defeating missile defenses. Iran might even develop and field anti-surface versions of its versatile Sayyid missile, adding to its regional threat options.